All right, hi everyone. Welcome to um, my first actual um, look into Ableton and a few of the plugins that I use today. Um, I, I've gotten a lot of questions about one of the plugins I use called Cycles. Um, people have heard me mention it a bunch, and I figured I'd just give you a quick run through of how I use it and what it, the capabilities are. So, quick, um, a few a few seconds of info. Cycles is uh, made by a company called Slate and Ash. Uh, runs primarily through Contact, so you'll need Contact or Contact Player, which is free, um, to run it. All I can say is it is an amazing, amazing, amazing plugin. So uh, I would highly recommend checking it out. I'll leave a link to their website uh, in the description, and you can check it out there. Okay, so we're in Ableton. Um, I have already brought up a Contact window with a piano. I'm gonna sample in a piano into Cycles. So Cycles operates off of you either using a preset sample that they've already put into cycles or bringing in your own user presets and user samples and then synthesizing those granularly or in a loop state and i'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute so i set the tempo to 65 or 130 bpm uh, and i'm going to just so a few things um Cycles really works really well with a lot of ambiance and texture. So I'm actually going to make this piano as texturized as humanly possible. Oh yeah, that's what I like. Nice. Very, very nice sounding piano. Basically just record a little clip uh, and then we'll sample it into cycles. Nice. Simple little line. It's nice and easy. I'm going to make sure that everything is in time, so I'm going to quantize. Really nice, easy little line to, to make. So I'm going to actually export this. We're going to call this Cycles Vid 1. Why not? So, um, like I said, Cycles is a contact instrument. I'm already going to, I'm going to cover the user sources today. Um, there's presets that they do and looping textures that they do. And um, I hardly ever really use those just because I'm way more interested in some of the stuff that I can put it, plug into it. So user sources basically means you're going to bring in uh, a sample that you've already constructed and let me get this out of the way, out of there um, so I have just dragged in right so this is just the sample that we just recorded and basically uh, all these tiles and textures you can split them into 16 different grids per measure or as simple as one And basically, this splits your ability to be able to synthesize uh, textures more um, centrally as far as like uh, doing whole passages of a sample or um, small individual pieces of it and being able to synthesize them all very differently. So I can actually go into this. The first uh, part of a loop state is being able to just, I could say, I want to create an interesting texture here where I, I'm going to take out a lot of the samples and just create like an interesting little uh, passage where it goes. So I'm already able to hear that I'm making my own sound out of this. And, and it comes off as very um, glitchy at first, which is a style that some people like to go for. You can do a lot of uh, amplitude envelopes, such as attack, so. Um, stuff like that. You can do a sustain amplitude, which is one of my favorites to play with, so. So being able to make it sound a little bit more choppy and then a release, which you know, fairly cool stuff. A lot in the loop state, there's a lot of other things like filtering, some filter envelopes to adjust the filter settings and then uh, just some basic effects like delay formatting. If you don't know what formatting. It's a 
the basic difference between something a sun that sun's warmer, darker, and a lot brighter. Um, uh, I, I won't go into the science of like what formants are right now. Maybe we can talk about that in another video. I'll also do pitch shifting. But I, I like the key D, so we're going to stick it there. And then you can also mess with speed uh, and your random panning. Uh, you can also do stuff like... Like messing with octaves and stuff like that. So that's the loop state. They have some built-in presets of ways you can manipulate. Some of my favorites, the B, the B and F. Um, such a clean, such a clean sound. I like the fact that you can actually change directions. So, so it's just, it's such a cool, cool, cool ambient sound that I think texturizes a lot of songs. And that's my favorite thing is when a song has a lot of really, really, really good texture. Um, I'm going to move into... Um, a few other things. Uh, the sequencer in this is very, very, very nice. I'm just going to run through a few of these presets. You can also change patterns and rhythms. Love that. I'm going to change it to an octave. You can also change rhythms. Get some really crazy intervals. You can change speeds, uh, latch, uh, which is basically where you just hit the note. And it'll just keep playing forever. Um, so that you can just continually edit, edit. So that's a lot of the loop texturing. Um, they do a lot of actual textural and gestural um, sounds, which I can run through. So it's, these are going to be a lot more of your texture based. Sounds so cool. Um, the So the looping state, really cool. I'm going to move into the grain state. So the grain state is basically where it's going to split in the same way that you can go into the loop state and have 16 grains and, and your, I mean, 16 grids. You can have 16 splits per measure of each part of the sample grains is doing that same thing but synthesizing each individual one differently right um, so this is the basic grain state really truly cool sound the very first thing I'll say is that grain is uh, a sound that's not going to be for everyone um, it's a lot of times very random and very um, unformed if that makes sense and uh, you're gonna have to be careful because I'll, it, it, the sounds can sometimes get away from you a little bit if you um, aren't careful with how you're crafting it so uh, I want to run through a few different things here so uh, the grain state has uh, position uh, density meaning how much uh, is happening all at once so you can go all the way down to You know, once every two bars, you can go quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenths, all the way up to freaking one 256th note. Um, after that, uh, there's envelopes. So how quickly um, the sound is reaching its maximum uh, velocity as far as volume and gain. Creates a lot more of a rolled back kind of effect. Um, I'm going to bring it back down to here so you can kind of hear more. Uh, once it reaches the maximum velocity, how long it sustains for. So that's obviously sustaining it fully. Um, along with this, we have uh, volume, which I don't really need to explain. Tuning, which is really interesting because you can go for a lot more of a warm, warm, warm sound. Um, and then you can also go a little bit more trilly and go high pitched. You know, such such great um, aspects to this plugin, but then also you can actually adjust the scales. I, so I'm gonna start with octaves. 
and I'm actually gonna increase the random octaves. Right? Such a cool, airy sound. But then, you know, you can get into... And then if I if I do something like modulate the the position of the sample, so let's do eight to one, which will basically such a such a, a cool sound that you know you can listen to some of these sounds in cycles and really realize that you've never heard a sound like that. I mean, I sure there are there are artists where they'll use randomness, but randomness is is one thing, but actually coming up with a texture that you've never heard before is one of the craziest things about cycles. Like that is such a pretty beautiful sound and I and I love it. Uh so I'm going to flip over a little bit to the random uh thing and this this will um all of these aspects here um, are all put to a randomized setting over here, which you can modulate. So position modulation, where if you turn it all the way up, it'll just start spreading out over the entirety of, of, of the sample. I'm going to bring that down because otherwise it'll get pretty hectic. And now time is, is where it'll say, I'm going to stick to your eighth notes or I'm going to be very sloppy, you know, um, stuff like that. Um, in the same way that envelope means how fastly it gets to um, the top velocity, reverse will say, we'll, we'll flip it uh, basically. So and if I was doing... which contributes to that amazing texturized sound. Um, one of my favorite things to do is random panning because you'll be listening on headphones and you'll be like, there's so much centered, but then there's so much texture out wide in your stereo mix. So if you're listening to this video on headphones, you should be able to hear things hit the right side and hit the left side. I'm I'm listening on my studio monitors and I love that sound so much. I might save this preset because I love that. Um, random volume, which I don't really need to explain. The octaves, which I we already had active, and then there's also drifting, which is if you're going for like a lo-fi kind of sound. A lot of lo-fi relies on drifting notes, so it's actually how much out of tune you're. So it provides variation. So I'll I'll play it and hopefully it'll summarize it in a better way than what I'm saying. You know, it's just, it is, it is a crazy, crazy, crazy sound. So that's uh, the grain textures. They also come with XY pads, which um, I don't know if you get, if you guys do know what XY pads are, um, they are a whole, a whole essence of um, being able to craft sounds that have more of a random texture. Um, so to do that, I'm going to actually go into my favorite XY sound where this is only going to be modulating the grain movements and I'm going to play it real quick and just show you what it does. It's, uh, it's such a nice sound. Now let's say I wanted to actually mess with a little bit of the uh, space texturing, right? So you hear, you heard before, starts dry, starts to get a little bit more airy and a little bit spacey. That's a, that's a natural reverb that's going in. So this would be so airy, right? And then this would be Very, very, very dry. Uh, it's it's such a cool um, process uh, working with this. Then you can go where it ma where it randomizes all four features. Way more of a pad texture, very airy. And then one of my favorite things to do here would be go to grains and then actually take the high pass up, get all that texture. Sorry, I meant low pass, not high pass. 
so that is grain. It is unpredictable in the best ways. One of my favorite things to do is actually do rhythmic. And it does show that it's not, you can have randomness in grain texturing, but you can also have very loopable ideas. And so, um, and, and ideas that would work really well in uh, context to an orchestrated song. So guys, I think that's where I'm going to wrap up uh, this, not tutorial, but just overview of how I use cycles. It is an amazing plugin. If you are interested at all into getting textures that are very much your own and only things that you can create, nobody else can create them. Cycles is the way to do it. I, I love cycles so, so, so much. Um, anyways, uh, guys, um, thank you so much for popping in here. I will talk to you guys later. Hit the like, sub, bell, please. Bye.